join that group. It's free. Join up. Connect with your brothers, as Tim was talking about. Connect with all of the guys who are here today, and you can start, you can continue the discussion, you can continue the fellowship, and you can stay in contact even if you're miles and miles apart. So, so please do that. We, we provided that to you as a service because we, we want you to use it, and we're happy, and we're happy to give it to you. Now, what, uh, what I'd like to do, Verbum, real, real simply, is it's a suite of apps or software. I know some of your software and show goes down. But we've made it very, very easy to use. It opens up every day, just like a daily newspaper. There's, look, you've got Mars Hill and Athens right there. You can click on pictures, inspirational quotes, verses, things from your library every day to help you get started if you don't know where to get started. Over here on the left-hand side, we have what's called the Go Box, which is as easy to use as a Google search. If you can do a Google search, you can take advantage of the software. Very, very simple. As some of you are coming up to, to me at the booth and, and shooting questions. All you have to do is type in a, a verse or a, a story like the woman at the well and click go or it's something like uh, somebody brought up earlier, uh, purgatory or indulgences. That's another one. That's something we have, in question, we have questions about, something we don't talk about. You don't hear from the pulpit on Sunday. Something that we often have questions about and sometimes our, our Protestant friends or our non-Catholic friends will have questions in you know, we may don't answer, but how many of you know how to answer, you know, what are indulgences? What, what does that mean? So you just type that in, indulgence, and automatically it's going to try to figure out what it is that I'm asking for. So I know it's a little hard to read on that screen, but you've got indulgence or gluttony or self-indulgence. But I'm not looking for self-indulgence. I just want to look for indulgences. So immediately... What it does is it pulls up a search report. You get the definition from the catechism. There it is. If you ever have one of your Protestant friends ask you, well, where is that in the Bible? Well, let's type it into verb and put it go. You've got all the Old Testament references, all of the New Testament references right there, church teaching, and much more. So that's just a quick overview. What I'd like to do for you now, I know that part is a little bit like drinking out the fire hose. But what I'd like to do is, is take you on a guided tour, um, take you on... A tour through the readings for today's Mass. I really was, uh, I was going to talk about Iron Sharpens Iron, but Doug's talk last night and the Holy Spirit really inspired me to do something a little bit different, especially once I saw the, uh, the verse for today, starting in Acts 4.13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they wondered and recognized that they had been with Jesus. Folks, I, I don't have a theology degree. I'm a convert and recent one at that. I am definitely a common man, much like most of the rest of you. But with the right tools and the right, even just with the right tools, you can dig deeper into Scripture. You can go further in your faith than you ever thought possible. I'm going to go ahead and click on the Gospel, and you'll notice that this familiar lectionary on the left, I'm going to click the Gospel of Mark. My Bible up top is going to change underneath my commentary changes. Over here on the right are two boxes that I'll talk about here in just a little bit. Underneath, one of the things that we've done with Verbum is it's not just a series of books, it's not just a Bible, they're all interconnected to each other. And we've also done things to help bring them alive so that you can understand it, so that you can practice that Lectio Divina, so that you can absorb the Word of Christ. You know, Doug asked, who owns your heart? I want to ask you, who owns your mind? Because we all know garbage in, garbage out, right? But the Word of God is pure gold. Amen? Amen? So we want to absorb the Word of God as much as we possibly can. So we're looking here at the events. One of the things we've done is put together an event timeline where you can see everything in context. The life of Jesus in order. It doesn't matter what verse it is. And here we have Jesus giving the Great Commission. And I click on that and notice that you know it happened in Galilee. I can click and bring up a map, which is awesome. But what I'd like to do is look at the account in Matthew, which is just a little bit longer. So I click on Matthew, and it brings up the Great Commission, which we're all familiar with. Uh, you know, Jesus says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you to the end of the age. Sounds a lot like Joshua 1 9 that the devil brought up to. I'm with you always. Do not be discouraged, right? But what I'd like to focus on is the much skipped over verse 17. 
This gets skipped over so often, it's almost suspicious. It says, and when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. It's really interesting because Matthew has, they all worshipped him, but some doubted. He's not saying that the ones who doubted didn't worship. He's saying that they all worshipped, but some of them, while worshipping, still doubted. Now that strikes me as a little odd. Doesn't that strike you as a little strange? What does Matthew mean by doubt? I mean, we all have, we all have doubts, right? But is, does he mean a skepticism or an intellectual kind of doubt? What I love about this, and what, what this has done, what Verbum has done for me, is it's taken me so much deeper because if you have those kinds of questions, and by the way, the best way to study the Bible is to just ask stupid questions, right? <laughs> you know, what does he mean by doubt? You just, uh, and what does he mean by worship? If I just go over here to worship, the beautiful thing about verb is it's bottomless. So if I highlight the word worship there and I click on it, I can look at the original Greek, even though I don't speak any Greek, I've been learning it on accident since I started working for this company. It's a little unexpected. <laughs> but you have the words here and it's, it's proskuneo is the, is the pronunciation of it. And it means to fall down and worship. It's used 60 times in the New Testament. It gives me this whole report on it. But I can look and see just what Matthew has to say about it. He uses it 13 times. And I'm going to cut out showing you, taking, guiding you through some of it. You know, please come see me at the booth if you want to see the full thread. But just because we're short on time, uh, I'm not going to go over all the examples. But Matthew always shows two things about worship. Number one, worship is something that you do. It's not just something you feel in your heart or something you believe with your mind. It's something that you do almost always. Actually, always in Matthew, it's something you do with your body. The first example is the wise men. They come to Jesus and they fall down before him. Uh, is, is the way that this word is, this Greek word is translated. They fall down before him and give him gifts. Um, Jesus, uh, the devil tempts Jesus to worship him. And Jesus re responds that worship is due to God and to God alone. And then finally, we go through a few other examples of uh, where somebody comes to Jesus and kneels before him and Jesus heals him. And then finally, we have our verse. So worship is something that you, you do. It's something physical that you do. Doubt. Let's do the same thing with this word doubt. You just highlight the word and we do a, a Bible word study and we can take a closer look at the word doubt. And again, I'm going to limit it to Matthew. Oh, wait, wait a second. I don't have to limit it to Matthew. Matthew is the only person in the entire Bible who uses this word to doubt. I don't know if you can see it there on the screen, the number two. That means Matthew uses it twice, and it's only used twice in the entire Bible. That's a little weird, don't you think? Matthew uses this in two places. The Greek word is distazo. Everybody say distazo. <laughs> Yeah, 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 you're speaking Greek already too. You get home, your wife's going to wonder what happened to you. Come home speaking Greek, right? <laughs> this word distazo uh, is also, again, that passage that Doug talked about last night where Peter walks on the water and he starts walking and he falls and Jesus says, oh, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? That's right. So it's that same word. We look at the, the dictionaries here, and I can just pull this up, again, not knowing any Greek, and I can see the definitions. It says doubt, doubt, right? Waver, to hesitate. But if you look a little deeper, if you want to come up with a synonym, a similar word for it, in a single word, it's fear. And you notice that the disciples here in verse 17, and when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted that didn't stop them from the act of worship. And so I want to encourage you men. We all have fears in our lives. We all have the storm that rages around us, whether it's work or our family life or circumstances in our life or colitis or, or getting hit by a drunk driver. It actually happened to me, and that's one of the reasons why I became Catholic. My whole life fell apart, and Christ was there to catch me and bring me home into his church. And I pray and I, I hope and I pray that you have that same experience at different conversion points in your life. But Christ is, is there for you. If you only open your heart to him, open your mind to him, crack open the word every day. And 
if you can use a Google search, you can use Verbum to go further in your faith and allow him to come deeper and deeper into your lives. Now, our time is really short, so I'm going to run through this very, very quickly. It's going to be like drinking from a fire hose. All right, so I want to answer the most common questions that people have about, about what this is. Because we have over 40,000 titles available. Uh, you can own individual works like the Catechism or the Bible and get these interconnected works. But what we've done is we've organized them in the libraries. In your pocket, there's this little verbum uh, fold-out deal, right? And it shows a lot of this information, so I'm going to go through this very, very quickly. Verbum Basic, we just designed for people who, if, if you're a beginner to the faith, Verbum Basic is for you. If you've never opened, cracked open the Catechism, it's over 200 resources. And all of the people, places, and things, that event timeline that I showed you, all of that is, is in there. And it's only $23 a month. It's a very small investment for your faith for over $3,000 worth of print books. Verbum Foundations is the next step up. It's only $38 a month. I'm going to fly through this really quick. It's only $38 a month. Scripture Study has over double the resources of Foundations, $67 a month. It's for those of you who are teaching or leading Bible studies. Master, this is a great gift for Father or the seminarian in your life. So uh, if you do want to get somebody a gift, please come see me. Come see me at the booth. It's either 101 or 70 a month if you want to stretch it out a little further. And Capstone is for any, any total Bible nerds out there that we built Capstone for you. It's, it's massive. It's worth over 25000 in print. It's just huge. As large as it is, you can put it on all your machines. You can study on the go. Uh, all your notes and highlights sync. When you own it, you own it. It's not owned by your machine. So you can put it on as many machines as you want. Okay, if you have any other questions, come see me at the booth. We're doing a special 20% discount for today only. 30-day uh, money-back guarantee. You're going to upgrade, downgrade, or return the whole thing. We don't want you to feel any pressure, but I can't extend the discount further than, uh, further than today. Please connect with us online. Connect with the men's group online. And I want to leave you with this quote from St. Jose Maria Scriva. It's that study is a grave obligation. For a modern apostle, and if you haven't figured out, you all are modern apostles. An hour of study is an hour of prayer. Thank you, and, and God love you.